Yes. Hello. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, so, to, so I'm going to talk about um, this uh, proposal that I think Phil mentioned uh, earlier on today, which is basically block space uh, auctions and um, an integrated um, market that kind of separates uh, the function of uh, block builders that come to get that uh, actually package and come up with proposals from blocks from the consensus function of block proposing and our proposal to add that into the Ethereum sharding design. Uh, so a quick uh, summary of the Ethereum sharding design. Uh, so there's a beacon chain, uh, there's a bunch of shard chains, uh, currently 64, but that amount is uh, likely to increase over time. And uh, the shard chains uh, just have data, uh, so they're just a data availability space. And uh, the reason why these shard chains exist is basically to provide space for rollups to uh, publish their data and have it be guaranteed by a yeah, consensus. Uh, through data availability sampling that this data actually is available, right? So the projects that are currently rollups with the data on mainnet could instead be rollups with their data on chart chains. And this would uh, increase their scalability by something like a factor of 100. Now, the, ch the question is like, what actually is the fee market for uh, putting data into these uh, shards going to look like, right? Um, so, Basically, the uh, a, a challenge here is um, that like we're looking at these data blobs, and it will mostly be a, a rollup projects providing these large data blobs. But conceivably, there could be multiple rollups that uh, provide multiple blobs that get included into the same shard block. And uh, the job is to just make it easy for block proposers to choose like which one of uh, like what data to include and get paid for it. Um, so. This is the proposal for a market for choosing block proposals. So there's a few steps, but I'll go through it step by step. Uh, so we have a class of actor called block builders, and uh, the block builders propose block bodies. And think of the block body as being just a lump of data. So it has no meaning within the protocol itself, but rollups can refer to it. Right? Rollups uh, will be able to make proofs that, that show that, hey, this particular piece of data actually is available because it actually was published in a shard block at some previous point in time. Uh, so the block body, you can uh, compute a polynomial commitment and that can go into a header. And so there is this concept of a block body header. A header contains the commitments of the block body and it also contains a signature from the block builder that produced it together with a, a number that represents what fee the block builder is willing to pay. So we have a bunch of block builders, they create a bunch of bodies and uh, from those bodies, you can create the headers. So the header is gonna be like uh, at most like a, maybe a hundred bytes, maybe a little more altogether. And this all gets uh, published into a special peer-to-peer -peer network that we call the proposal header subnet. Uh, so then there is the block proposer, right? So block proposers are these actors that are actually the ones that are supposed to have kind of ultimate choice about what gets included. And block proposers are going to look at all of these headers and uh, they are going to take the one that has the highest fee and um, oh, this is a, a mistake. This should be 0 0.15 instead of 0 0.13. They're going to take the, the header that has the, fee, the, the highest fee, not the lowest, and they're going to sign it and they're going to uh, republish uh, the signed header into the, peer, into the proposal header subnet. And the block builder that actually created the winning uh, header is going to see this. Right, so step one, block builders create bodies, submit headers with fees. Uh, block proposer chooses the highest fee that they find, they sign it. And step three, the block builder sees this. And at that point, it's up to the block builder to publish the body. Once the block proposer has submitted the header, the block proposer does not do any, needs to do anything more. They have no further choice about what happens. So notice that at the time that the block proposer makes their only decision, um, they do not see the body. Right, so, yeah, so this makes the, the fee market uh, very efficient for the block proposer. They don't have to do any kind of complex math. All they have to do is see a bunch of headers and choose the one with the highest fee. And they have no ability to censor because they have no ability to see contents. Uh, this gets published back to the network. And then the block builder uh, is the one that publishes the block body. They have to publish a block body who's uh, commit, uh, where if you calculate the commitment that actually matches up with the header. And so the block builder does not have a choice of what to publish. They have to actually publish the original block body that they started with. 
and then they publish this into the main chart subnet, and then you have the attesters who are basically the same attesters that are currently participating in ETH 2.0 consensus. And instead of voting on like basically either there being a new block or there not being a new block, they end up voting on one of three choices. Uh, one choice is that the body is available, so everything is available. The second is that the header is available, but the body is not available. And the third is that the, he the, the header is unavailable, right? So if the header is unavailable, that basically means that well, this specifically means the signed header is unavailable, right? So it means that the proposer actually kind of neglected their duties, the proposer was offline. If the header is available, but the body is unavailable, then that means that the block builder neglected their duties. So in this case, what happens is that the fee from the block builder to the proposer still goes through, but the body is counted as not being included. And then if the body is available, then the body is counted as being included. Um, so the goal is to basically replicate this uh, kind of fee market design, sort of similar to what Flashbots does with a single bundle with uh, this uh, nice privacy property, but do it all in protocol in a way that's uh, kind of very efficient, has uh, very light uh, uh, trust assumptions. So properties, right? So block proposer does not know any contents during step one. Uh, by the time the block proposer assigns the header, which is step two, after they do this and after they publish, they cannot prevent publication of the block body. Um, and the final actor in publication actually is the block builder, but they have no choice of what to publish. Um, I made an ETH research post about this. So I, it may have been uh, linked somewhere, but you can easily find it. It's like block builder proposer separation as uh, some. Like just search for those words on research and you'll find it. And it talks about the rationale of, all, uh, of uh, kind of all of these uh, design decisions, but the goal is to basically allow block builders to be this specialized actor that can understand so kind of where to grab different pieces from roll-up projects and other projects to come up with a block body. Uh, and, and then the block, the function of block builders is fairly specialized and the function of block proposer is this very easy uh, function that's very amenable to decentralization, which is they just see a bunch of headers and they pick the one with the highest price. Um, so this potentially even allows the block proposer to be an MPC, for example, right, which could be useful for staking pools because uh, then, and it actually provides an advantage for decentralized staking pools because decentralized staking pools are the only ones that can credibly not be a kind of siphoning off MEV for, to themselves by side channels because they could have multiple participants that are running uh, this algorithm, and they and, and they would have to all agree on like, which uh, which of these uh, headers has the high, uh, has the highest fee. Um, so this can be combined together with flashbots. So Phil also talked about the possibility of combining together the SGX based approach with the economic approach. What I talk about here is purely economic, right? There's the fee and the incentive for the block builder to publish is that if they don't publish, they have to pay the fee, but they don't get the benefit of their block body being included. And, and the incentive against uh, censorship here is basically that if there is something, like if there is some underlying lump of data that pays a fee, um, then if the block builders try to censor it, they'll just get outbid by block builders who don't censor it. And if the censoring block builders suggest uh, as start like pushing their bids higher, then they'll have to basically pay higher bids than what they can actually get in revenue. And so they'll have to keep losing money for a, a very quickly. They lose money once every block forever until eventually they have to stop censoring, right? So, but these are all economic arguments. Um, but what you can also have is you can have this market going from searchers to relayers, right? So block builders in this case, like we can call them relayers, block, this would be the central actor, and then they themselves would be listening to a flashbot style market where you have a lot of different searchers. Searchers can specialize, they can focus on individual rollups, for example, and so searchers are this function where you can do something useful even if you're very small even if you're an individual hacker for example and then relayers would be responsible for just doing all this aggregating between the searchers and you can kind of slot this into flashbots and even kind of flashbot flashbots with mev sgx almost as it exists today except instead of the contents of a body being unlocked when uh, the miner gets the proof of work the contents of the body would be unlocked when the relayer gets back the header signed by a proposer. Um, so there's this nice 
a kind of opportunity to create this three layer market that basically has a kind of very decentralized a, a market of searchers doing all sorts of things to a fairly small but still competitive group of these more professionalized three layers and then going to uh, block proposers. So that's all for, that, that's it for me and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy the presentation. Hope you go read the research post.